Guys, I've got a question for you. Is there anything better than a tractor? Well, it turns out there just might be. Well, I think that question has a lot of answers depending on who you ask, but we're gonna compare a tractor versus skid steer. I'll give you my take on it, the pros and the cons, the strengths, the weaknesses. Let's go over it now. And you know what to do if you do enjoy the video, please. Take the time, give a thumbs up, leave a comment below. If you want to see more tractor videos, hit subscribe. And if you want something for your tractor, for the front end, for the back end, check out GoBrookTractors.com. Okay, let's talk about price first because that is the overwhelming consideration between these two machines. Pricing is probably the most difficult thing to try to quantify between a skid steer and a tractor. The simplest way to sum it up is that a skid steer is going to cost you more money than a tractor, but not just the machine itself, also the attachments. Now again, just for a couple of actual values, this John Deere 333G behind me with the bucket on it, with a cab, it's got the HVAC cab, so you have heat and air conditioning. It's high flow, it's pretty well decked out, it has about 400 hours on it now, three years old. I'd probably sell that for about $75,000. Now my John Deere 4720, that's gonna be nine years old, about 800 hours on it. it. Does have a cab with air conditioning and heat. If I sold it with just a loader on there, I'd be at about $45,000 ballpark. Now that's not a perfect comparison. I'm not saying this versus that machine in particular. This is a 100 horsepower skid steer, 66 horsepower tractor. You know, there's differences there, but it's just a couple data points for you to kind of paint a picture. Now that's all about the pricing for the base machines themselves. But if we're talking about an attachment like a grapple, what you see here, something outfitted for a good size tractor. Again, 66 horsepower tractor, this loader will lift over 2000 pounds. This grapple here is gonna cost you close to $3,000. However, the grapple that I'm using on my skid steer, and it's been the 333G, it could be the 330G, even the 324E that I had before that, I'm gonna use a bigger, heavier duty grapple on here, and you're gonna be more in the range of four to $5,000 because these loaders have more capacity, there's more weight behind there, you have to size things appropriately, and with a bigger machine, even though the footprint doesn't physically look bigger, it's just more weight, more hydraulic capacity, so you need beefier attachments to go along with that. One other interesting point on pricing is gonna be in general maintenance. I don't have nearly as much experience in skid steers, but my personal experience so far is that skid steers are actually a little bit cheaper on regular maintenance. And that's not talking about things that may break and need repair because I've been fortunate not to really need any of that. But I'm talking air filters and greasing and just oil changes and whatnot. The service intervals are much longer or more spread out on a piece of machinery like this versus a tractor. And the reason for that from what I've been told from people smarter than myself is that construction equipment like this skid steer is meant to be operated by a full-time operator, right? 40 hours a week. And you're gonna rack up hours a lot quicker, typically, in that kind of a situation versus a tractor that's gonna be used maybe for some guys, 10 hours a week, maybe five hours a week. So that makes sense for a guy in a skid steer that's working it full time. You don't wanna have a 200 hour service interval like you would on a tractor because you'd just be changing oil all the time. And so because you have those longer intervals, it means you have less maintenance to do, less oil changes to do, which I find pretty nice. One of the big differences between these two machines is gonna be how you're using them with attachments. And so while it's pretty obvious, you have your front end loader on both of these machines. You're only gonna use front end attachments on your skid steer. You have the option to use the three point hitch or the front end loader on a tractor. Now this comes with its own set of pros and cons and I love front end attachments. I mean, who doesn't? It's a lot easier to see when you're looking forward, a lot more comfortable. However, there's a big difference between sitting on a tractor and looking forward or sitting on a skid steer. When you're sitting on a skid steer, you feel like you're just right on top of the action. You have very good visibility to see what is going on up here. And depending on the attachment you're using, you know, if it is a bucket, like I've used one of these to help grade out and smooth a driveway, or if you're grappling to have a good idea of how to get underneath that log or that pile of debris, you have just excellent visibility to do so. Now on a tractor, while it is still nice to have a view right down in front, you have the big engine compartment that's in the way. So you're trying to look around to either side of that engine compartment in between the loader arms there to see what's going down below. You simply don't have the same kind of visibility that you do from a skid steer. Now on the flip side, depending on what kind of attachments you're using, I'm gonna use a mulcher head for example. If you have that on the front end loader here on the skid steer, there's a lot of debris that's getting chopped up, mulched up and flying around. So there's 
a inherent danger with something flying back and wanting to whack the cab door if you have a cab if you have an open station that's a whole other scenario which is not a good one so between a mulcher and maybe a disc mower there's a couple attachments i probably wouldn't even use unless i had a cab and except for a couple fairly uncommon exceptions there's not anything like that for the front end loaders of these tractors you'll see a couple little mowers that are out there that are hydraulically driven but they're not very common and they are quite a bit further away as well the danger just isn't there like it is in a skid steer now on tractors of course it's standard these days anyways to have a three-point hitch and a rear pto now we talked about price earlier being a lot cheaper for attachments on a tractor versus a skid steer and a lot of those are going to mount to your three-point hitch whether they're using the rear pto or not but that could be for a tiller a land plane it could be for a post hole auger even a snow blower forward or rear facing and those mowers or those mulchers that we talked about that are kind of dangerous to operate on a skid steer, those are going to mount on your three-point hitch and run off of your rear PTO. And so no matter what one of those options you're going with, if you're mounting them on a three-point hitch and using it compared to a skid steer, you're going to save some money. Now, there's a couple downsides that go along with that. So this is going to be behind you. So from the operator station, you need to keep an eye on it or you want to keep an eye on it. So that is going to require you to turn around. Maybe not constantly, but you have to frequently peek behind you, see what's going on. We actually use some mirrors to try to get a decent look at what's going on there so we don't have to turn around as often. But some of these attachments, like a mulcher that you would mount on the three-point hitch or like a rear-facing snowblower, you have to actually drive backwards while you're using it. So you are going to have to turn around and face kind of, well, be in an awkward position there while you're using it which is just really uncomfortable. Now, getting back to visibility while you're using those attachments, we talked about kind of being a little hard to see what's going on up front here. You got to peek left or right, but the rest of the tractor has really good visibility. You can easily see all around you, behind you on both sides. It's easy to see what's going on in every direction for operator safety, machine safety, and the safety of everything around you. A skid steer, on the other hand, has amazing visibility with what's going on up front. I mean, it's incredible. You're right there. You can see everything you need to. The flip side is, you have these loader arms that are blocking the view on either side. You can't see what the heck's behind you. Fortunately, I do have a camera so I can have a pretty good idea what's behind me. But if you don't have one of those, most skid steers don't. It's almost like a trust system that you're just hoping nobody's around you. There's nothing to run over, no trees, no bushes. Now, even with all of this stuff, the backup camera, the visibility up here, there's big blind spots. Look at this whole section, this whole back corner on either side. I've whacked a few trees. It's hard not to sometimes. And as I'm getting ready to step out of this, there's a difference in access getting in and out of a tractor versus a skid steer. Personally, we have used a skid steer a lot with pallet forks on there, which means we have something that's partially picked up or we're trying to get it maneuvered to pick up. And if I'm on a tractor, I can easily hop on and off from the side and kind of shift something around, get it situated, whatever I need to. On a skid steer, you have two things you can do. You can have it all the way down, or you can have it all the way up. But if you have your loader part way up, you can open your door and you're kind of trapped inside. Now for the longest time, that just bothered the absolute heck out of me thinking, what if the whole system froze up part way up and I'm just trapped in here, I can't get out of the front door. Well, our buddies over at Western Equipment slash 24 seven parts, Brent did a great video actually showing how you take this rear window out. It's an emergency exit so you can get out if you need to. Obviously, you don't want to, but it's good to have a backup option. And by the way, what kind of lousy salesman would I be if I didn't mention that 247parts.com? They are an authorized John Deere dealer. They can get you any parts you need for John Deere. You can save money with code GWT. You go to 247parts.com, place your order, enter the code, save some money. Can't be found anywhere else. Now you can see it's a side load or a side entry on a tractor. If you have a cab, I mean, same thing if you have an open station. It's typically going to be easier to load up or climb in from one side than it is the other side. Normally you have a joystick and oftentimes it's too high to step up and there's no intermediate step on a tractor, but it's just totally different than a skid steer. There is a JCB teleskid, I think it's called, um, that is side entry, which I almost bought one of those simply because of that fact that you could get in and out from the side. You didn't feel like you were trapped. However, as one person recently pointed out in a post, I had loaded my skid steer into my dump trailer, you know, a high side dump trailer, and it just barely fit. There was like three quarters of an inch on either side. It was really tight. And a guy said, man, it's a good thing you didn't get that JCB because I would have never got out from the side. There's a few critical specifications, dimensions, weight, that are gonna make a big difference on 
where you store your equipment, maybe how you tow your equipment, and where you can use your equipment. Now in a lot of these scenarios, I think for most folks watching my channel, the tractor is going to come out on top, but there could be a flip side to that as well. So try to get some perspective on how a strength can be a weakness and vice versa, depending on your situation. All right, a couple data points. Again, we're just using these pieces of equipment, so your numbers will most likely vary, but this John Deere 333G weighs about 12,000 pounds. That's a chunk of weight. If you compare that to the 4720, you're at about 5,000 pounds with the cab tractor. Now I can think of a couple areas in particular where that weight difference is gonna be very critical. Now the first scenario will be if you need to tow or haul your equipment. Number one, you need a bigger truck, more power, right? And number two, you need a bigger trailer. And so think about that. You have 12,000 pounds versus 5,000 pounds. So if the GVWR is 10,000 pounds, for example, you can't just haul 10,000 pounds of weight on that trailer. You have to deduct the trailer weight itself. If you have a spare tire on there or an equipment box, something else that's driving the weight up, take that off too. But let's just say 3,000 pounds. 10,000 minus 3,000 leaves you 7,000 pounds of carrying capacity in ideal circumstances. I'm not one for pushing the limit, so deduct a little bit more to give yourself some safety. This doesn't account for extra attachments you might want to take along with you, which of course are going to then require a longer trailer, which are going to weigh more than and then reduce the carrying capacity. So for a lot of folks, a 10,000 pound trailer will work pretty well for a compact tractor like this, depending on how long you need it to go. Now, something like this 333G is gonna require a beefy trailer. And so you may have seen my PJ trailer. It's a, a gooseneck. That's 15,000 pound GVWR. This skid steer is too big to haul safely on that trailer. So between adding the 333G and we also have a Manitou telehandler that is I think it's about 16,000 pounds. I had to add on a couple extra trailers to my arsenal. So we got another gooseneck that's 24,000 GVWR. And we do have a triple axle dump trailer that is 20,000 GVWR that I've hauled this around in and it works quite well. Now, maybe one small advantage to a skid steer over a tractor is that you can typically get by with a shorter trailer for a skid steer than you can with a tractor. Another time when weight is really important is if you're gonna be traveling across your lawn. A skid steer is of course, extremely heavy, a tractor is a lot lighter. So the footprint is typically gonna be easier on your lawn. And while a track will spread out the weight distribution, lower the PSI, gonna work to your advantage, when these things start turning and shifting and swinging around, they are gonna rip up a lawn in no time. If you get a wheeled skid steer, you know, with tires on it like a tractor has, those things again, because of how they turn, they can basically zero turn around. You can easily and quickly rip up a lawn. A tractor is typically a lot safer. Maybe the four series is getting a little large for a lawn if you're gonna do a lot of repetitive use, but all your smaller tractors too, the three series, the two series, the one series, and, and similar models from other brands are gonna be much safer on your lawn versus something like this. On the flip side, of course, right? More weight can work to your advantage. You know, I'm big on safety with tractors. They're just naturally a little light. So you wanna have a lot of counterweight on the backside in order to safely and efficiently use a front end loader, feel more planted to the ground. So those extra 7,000 pounds that you have over here, that comes in pretty handy. I mean, this machine is safe, secure, stable, efficient. I can lift whatever I want, never feel like I'm maxing it out. It's actually an incredible feeling, but it's just painting a picture of the night and day difference between these two pieces of equipment. And really along those lines, kind of the, the feeling of safety or, or, or comfort while you're operating, there is no piece of equipment that I feel safer and more secure and more confident in than in my skid steer. So that feeling of safety has resulted in me taking my skid steer places that I would never take my tractor. And in fact, we've actually used the skid steer to create new trailways throughout our property in order to safely use the tractor because we just didn't have a safe way to get from point A to point B. There's a couple of big requirement differences between these two machines here. Let's take front end loaders, for example. A lot of us need to lift a certain amount of weight. And when you have to lift that weight, that number can be misinterpreted very easily online. There's so many different data points, so many different ways that they measure that weight. So I would urge you to not push yourself up against the limits of what you read online, give yourself some margin. Give yourself 20% of margin. You're gonna be a lot happier that you did. You're gonna use your tractor a lot differently instead of maybe being very ginger or delicate with it, trying not to tip things over or 
get it all cattywampus and, and maxing it out, pushing it to the edge. So for a little fun comparison here, I used to have a John Deere 324E skid steer. It was 74 horsepower. This is 66 horsepower on this tractor. You know, it's, it's a few horsepower different. I get that, but it's fairly close. So let's run with it. So this front end loader on the John Deere is going to lift about 2,300 pounds to full height, which is around nine foot. If we take the rated operating capacity, I'll explain that in just a minute. On the 324E, you're going to lift about 2,700 pounds to over 10 foot high. So you're going to lift about 10% more with the 324E and you're going to lift it about 10% higher. That term, rated operating capacity or ROC, is something you don't really hear in the tractor world, more of a construction equipment type of term. Tied into that is called tipping load. So tipping load is what you might think, the amount of weight it's going to take lifting up to, to tip the machine over. And so on that same machine, the 324E, the tipping load is about 5,400 pounds. So your rated operating capacity, which is kind of used as a safe limit to move around with, is going to be about 50% of your tipping load. So while that 10% difference between the two machines didn't seem like much, on the tractor, you're basically maxing it out doing that. And on the skid steer, you're about 50%. So we talked about a 10% difference in lift capacity between the tractor and the skid steer, but the tractor basically is reaching its tipping load to get to that number, whereas the skid steer is about 50% of its tipping load, putting you in a safer situation. If you are using one of these machines, then you're using hydraulics, but how you use them, what you can use them for, are gonna vary greatly. Now we're in the biggest end of the compact tractor market right now, so this is gonna be hydrostatic drive. You can get a power shuttle or some sort of a gear drive if you want to. You step up into the utility tractors a little bit bigger, and there is no more hydrostatic drive. It's all gear driven in one form or the other. But for the sake of comparison, you're gonna drive a hydrostatic transmission in this tractor when you're operating it. The same thing can be said about the skid steer as well. It is completely hydrostatic. There is no gears that you're changing. You may have a button to push from a high to a low range electronically, but there's nothing that you're gonna be doing to push in a clutch change direction other than moving a handle or pushing a foot pedal. Now, same thing for your loaders, right? Both of these loaders are gonna be operated with a joystick controlling hydraulics to raise them and lower them, to tilt them and curl them. If you have a third function on there, like with a grapple, for example, to open and close the jaws of the grapple. Now, most of the time, if you wanna run a grapple or something that requires additional hydraulics on your tractor, you need to add on a third function. It's not gonna come standard. Now, in my experience in owning and operating skid steers, I've never seen one without those additional hydraulics already on them. I'm sure they exist, but they're not very common. So far, pretty similar in how things are operating between the tractor and the skid steer. But when we get to attachments like the brush mulcher, like maybe a tiller or a mower, for example, that's where there's a big difference. And that's also part of the reason why the cost of these attachments and the cost of the machine is a lot higher on a skid steer. You're gonna have hydraulic motors that are driving those blades or that mulcher head or those tines for the tiller versus a PTO, a rear PTO spline that's coming off the transaxle and driving that attachment on the backside. Part of the reason that these skid steers cost so much is because of that advanced hydraulic system that has a lot more GPM, a lot more hydraulic power that it's outputting. All of those attachments, your mulchers, your mowers, your rototillers, your snowblowers, those all come with a hydraulic motor that's on there, which requires a large back-end system on your skid steer to operate that. So while they are extremely effective, they are also extremely costly. A tractor, on the other hand, is not going to have nearly as large of a hydraulic system, maybe 50% in the size ballpark, but that's where your rear PTO or even a mid PTO, depending on the tractor model, comes in handy. That is a relatively cheap way to get a lot of power. You can slap a gearbox on there. You can run your mower. You can run your mulcher off the back end. You can run a snowblower off the back end or off the front end as well. But it's a big difference because that gearbox is a lot cheaper. The hydraulic system isn't advanced, so that's cheaper as well. I get a lot of questions about a couple of different attachments, wanting to know from tractor owners if you can use them on your front end loader like I do on my skid steer. The first one is gonna be that mulcher head and while it is awesome on the skid steer, it's simply not gonna work on the front end loader of your tractor and that's for a couple of reasons. The first one, they weigh a lot. They're very heavy so you're gonna eat up 50% or more of your lift capacity. The second reason is that these tractors just simply don't have enough continuous hydraulic flow to effectively operate one of these mulchers. 
The other common example, especially this time of year as we get into winter, is can I use a snowblower on my front end loader? And the same premise applies. There just simply isn't enough hydraulic power on one of these tractors. And you will see an option out there. I've never sold one because of the absurd price, but you can get something called a hydraulic power pack that you actually tie into your three-point hitch, run a hydraulic pump off of your rear PTO, take some hydraulic lines all the way up front, and then have a front end loader mounted snowblower. Let's just say you could take your family to Disney World and Hawaii and probably on an around the world cruise for the price of one of those setups. So this wasn't meant to be all inclusive. It's just kind of the, the big things that jumped out to me. And I would love to know, I think a lot of others would too, when they're trying to make that decision, right? Between a tractor and a skid steer, what are we forgetting, right? I'm sure there's other considerations, other variables. Everybody's situation is unique, right? There's just a different list of priorities that we're all gonna have. Now for me, as we develop this 140 acres that we have out here, I'm blessed to have both pieces of equipment right now some of the big heavy hitting stuff, I find myself leaning on the skid steer. However, I think in the long run, you know, my heart is kind of with the tractors. I love them, you know, for projects like mowing a field, tilling, I just like a tractor a lot better for that. But there's some big heavy duty tasks that if you have the equipment, why not use it? Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. You know what, if you did enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Do leave a comment down below, subscribe to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your machine, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.